An operation that has been garnering a lot of deserved attention recently is CARES, corneal allogenic intrastromal ring segment implantation, the brilliant alternative to Intax, which was pioneered by Dr. Susan Jacobs about six years ago. Steadily over these years, more and more surgeons have been taking up the technique as an alternative to Intax because CARES may provide better visual results while also being a safer operation. Because CARES substitutes human donor cornea collagen for an otherwise artificial plastic segment, it seems as though the benefits that of corneal reshaping can be achieved with a lower risk from some foreign material. We ourselves have been doing CARES now for, I think, probably four years or so, and I'd like to share just another routine, normal, run-of-the-mill case that perhaps will give people out there interested in starting with the technique a little bit of encouragement that it can be done. So the Operation CARES, we do very comfortably just under topical anesthesia in our office, basically on a weekly basis. This eye has just had topical tetracaine anesthesia supplemented with a little lidocaine gel. And what we're doing here is just positioning the patient and the speculum for maximal comfort and visibility. The whole operation really just takes about five or six minutes. And so you've got ample opportunity to make sure that everything is aligned and the speculum is just how you like it so things can be done properly. So here we are just repositioning the speculum. You can see this is an unedited video because I want to show you really all of the steps. Now the operation will begin by drying the corneal surface and then making an epithelial impression using a device called a zone marker. And this is borrowed from the days of Intax implantation. This is a centration device that helps you plan where the incisions will be made. Now, because we're making an epithelial impression, we want a dry epithelial surface. So when you indent these epithelial cells, you can still see that impression. So the first thing I'll do is I'll use these Maricel Wex just to gently blot the epithelial surface so that my zone marker can leave an imprint. Now these wax cells that I'm using, these are not cellulose. These are not com compressed bits of a normal wax cell. The reason is, is that a typical surgical sponge, a wax cell, that material is friable, it's flaky, and it can break off and be insinuated into the stromal tunnels that we'll use. So a Maricel sponge is a little bit better. So there you'll notice we've just made the epithelial impression with that zone marker over the first Purkinje image. And now I am dotting the center of that impression using a gentian violin inked Sensky hook. And that lines me up for here. I'll make another epithelial impression here. This is a gentian violin inked glide marker. And this shows me where the channels will be dissected in the recipient cornea. Now, a lot of people, when they do intacts or cares, they use a femtosecond laser to make the channels. We prefer a manual technique. And the reason is the manual technique is so much quicker. It's less expensive for the patients. They don't have to pay for the femtosecond laser. And also, rather than cutting through the recipient cornea, which the laser does, which may weaken it, instead we can spread spread through the lamellae of the cornea bluntly using a lamellar dissector, which may improve the strength of the recipient cornea. This is a diamond blade, which I've just calibrated to 60% of the measured thickness of the cornea taken from our Pentacam images. So we know the thickness of the cornea here temporally. I calculate with my calculator 60% of that depth. I set the diamond blade to 60% of the measured thickness, and I'm gripping the eye there with a Thornton ring. And that provides me just excellent stability and control. And the maneuver is down and back. And that way you know you're at a good 60% of the measured depth. Now here is a suction ring, which we're just going to insinuate around the surface of the eye underneath that eyelid speculum. And you'll notice my assistant there is squirting the cornea because 
in order to get a good suction, what you want is you really want there to be a water, an airtight seal. So as a result, we wet the surface of the cornea so you get good suction. So now we have the suction applied and I'm using what's called a pocketing hook. And this pocketing hook is being put down into the base of this incision and rotated to dissect laterally a one millimeter pocket there just adjacent to that primary incision. So just rotating that pocketing hook is all that's required. So now with the suction still on, we're going to use our symmetric glide, which is really colloquially known in our clinic as a shoehorn to place this curved corkscrew dissector into that incision. So there's the dissector and it's positioned adjacent to the incision and now we're sneaking it underneath this symmetric glide and as we turn it dissects this little channel in the recipient cornea. And now the symmetric glide is removed. It's only really needed just to start that pathway. So there we go. We have the symmetric glide out. We have the corkscrew dissector out. And now all of the uh, basic cutting has been done. Now the last little thing to do to the recipient cornea is to make a nasal incision, again with the diamond blade. And the reason is, is that with intax insertion, because the segments are very rigid, one incision is sufficient. We can make a single incision, place the segment into the incision, and push it along. But care segments, because their donor cornea are floppy, they're weak, and they really are not rigid enough to push them along all the time. So we make a second incision to facilitate pulling the care segment the rest of the way. Now the diamond blade is set to 100 microns deeper than the nasal incision. And this is to guarantee that this nasal incision intersects the channel that we just dissected. So there we go, down and back. And now we have a second nasal incision. I'm gonna test using an inverted Sinsky hook to make sure that this incision intersects the channel. So here's our inverted Sinsky hook, and I'm just sort of wiggling it there in the incision, and I'm going to double check that it intersects that incision, and it does. So now we are, we're ready to put this little segment into the recipient cornea. It's been stained blue, and it's been drying on these Maricel sponges, and the dehydration, the drying of the segment stiffens and thins it and that makes it tremendously easier to insert into the recipient cornea. So now I've got the segment and I'm going to grip the incision with some toothed tissue forceps and that facilitates loading this tissue into that channel. Okay, so this is a two-handed maneuver. Here I'm gripping the mouth of this temporal incision and I'm wiggling this care segment there into that temporal incision. So here we go. And this is tremendously easier if the segment is stiff and rigid and dried. So when you start, my key advice is you really wanna make sure you stain the segment so you can see it and you leave it out to dry. And I would say the, the dry time is a minimum of 15 minutes, better 30 minutes. So what we often do is we have a segment drying in one room while I'm doing some surgery in the nearby neighboring room. And once that surgery is over, the drying is done. So here I've got the segment nearly all the way placed, just with the trailing end hanging out through the temporal wound. And I'll use this nasal wound that I created to pull the segment over. So I'm going underneath the segment with this inverted Sinsky hook. And once I'm underneath the segment, I'm pulling up here and then dragging it. So I'm pulling up underneath the incision or underneath the segment and I'm dragging it over towards the nasal incision. 
And that ensures that this segment is fully filling that manually dissected channel. Then I'll kind of push this little temporal aspect in through the uh, temporal wound because you really don't want the segment hanging out through either the temporal wound or the nasal wound. You want it fully positioned inside the corneum. So that is the complete full unedited vision uh, or video of a normal CARES implantation which we perform in the office. This is a very safe and satisfying, a gratifying operation to perform. I think for the doctor and the patient alike, it's a comfortable procedure that you can do really in your office surgical suite, an ASC or a hospital. It doesn't require the use of a femtosecond laser. It has a learning curve, which is primarily related to the handling of the care segments. And that is dramatically blunted. It is facilitated enormously by staining and dehydrating the segments. So if I can leave you with one piece of advice, that would be it, to modify the segments to make them maximally easy to handle for yourself. If you're already doing intax implantation, or if you used to do them but became disenchanted because of safety concerns or because the corneas weren't being flattened as much as you would like, this may be something to give a try to offer some new option for your patients to improve their lives. Thanks so much.